Hello. In this video I'm going to briefly go over uh, the build I use to farm the resistance and then I'm going to go do a round of resistance in the way that I normally farm it. So the build I like to use is uh, Classified Striker. Now there are a lot of options you've got when it comes to farming resistance. You could go with Nomad, regular, or Classified. You could go with the defense set, it's pretty good. Um, but in general, you know, what you want to look for is decent damage, decent survivability, uh, and decent sustain, or any sort of, you know, health regen without the use of med packs. Otherwise, you got to buy more med packs during resistance, and that's less shade tech that you can spend on the crates. So, with Striker, for those of you who don't uh, know a lot about Striker, every, for regular Striker, every bullet you land on a target gives you a stack of the Striker bonus. The striker bonus gives you 1% damage bonus. So this stack, this can stack up to 100 times, and it always is decreasing at one stack every second. So uh, as you fire on a target, as you lay bullets on a target, you'll accumulate stacks, and your damage will shoot through the roof until it maxes out 100 stacks, and you get 100% damage bonus, uh, or 100% added weapon damage bonus. It's not exactly double damage if you've got other weapon damage bonuses as well, um, but it's very strong. Doing double damage when you've already got 360,000 listed primary firepower is, um, is pretty obscene. And the best part is Classified Striker makes it so that as you accumulate uh, stacks of your Striker damage bonus, you also accumulate stacks of a Striker healing bonus. And this healing bonus increases for every 3,000 stamina you have. And uh, personally, at 9,000 stamina, the healing is overkill for me. I don't do a lot of legendary content or uh, incursions. I mean, I you know, I dabble, but it's, it's not something I do day to day. I like having more casual, fun, um, laid back. I like to relax, right? So um, some of the heavier challenges, you know, I save for um, when I'm in the mood. So I go for 6,000 stamina, uh, and with my health, this amount of stamina gives me about like somewhere in the range of 35,000 health per second, uh, which is a little better than anyone's really good healing lunchbox, right? And I get to take it uh, with me wherever I go, constant healing all the time. So um, you kind of get a sense of what I mean by it. sort of like feels like you don't give up anything to be really good. So in this case you don't really feel like you need skills because you do such weapon damage and have so much healing that the, the skills you'd normally use to increase your damage or increase your survivability or sustain you've already got in sort of the baseline bo bonus of what being striker is all about. So uh, in general just some general stats here I've rolled two pieces of striker for stamina, the other three pieces to firearms. And I do this because I want to just barely get above stamina, so I roll enough pieces so I'm between 1 and like 1200 stat points away from the breakpoint that I want, and then I make up the rest with gear mods. Because if I roll like three pieces to stamina, because of all the rolls on classified gear, I'd be up at like the 6400, 6500 range, and that's too much for me. I want to get just barely enough stamina and push absolutely as much as I can out into firearms. Get as much damage as possible. So that's what I've done here. I'm wearing um, stamina mods. They're purple because they've got damage to elites. You can't get damage to elites on yellow mods unfortunately since it's a secondary stat. So I'm using purple mods. I'm using just enough purple mods to be able to get up to the stamina and then I don't happen to have a firearms mod that has damage to elites but if I did, I'd throw that in here. Damage to elites is a great stat for gear mods in PvE, as long as you're fighting a lot of yellow enemies. You know, if you're playing on normal all the time, fighting red enemies, uh, damage to elites isn't good. But for the resistance, anything after like wave 4 is going to be yellow enemies, so elites. So damage to elites is very powerful. Um, in general, I go for ammo capacity, enemy armor damage on major attributes, uh, damage to elites on minor attributes, some health on kill here and there, um, some health, I've got reload on my holster, um, I've got assault rifle damage on my gloves, I got skill haste here because there's really no other good choice, 
I could go for like SMG damage, but I don't really use SMGs all that much. Uh, my secondary weapon, the house. And I think my other options were like crit hit chance, crit hit damage, but I don't have crit stats anywhere. Also, my gear or attachments for the weapon I use almost all the time, so those were useless to me. I just ran some skill haste because why not? Whatever. Um, as far as weapons, I'm using what everyone else uses. Lightweight M4, basically because the gun just outclasses everything else. Especially with Striker, with all the stability from the Striker build, or from the Striker set, something like 30% stability from the Striker set, 35 maybe. Um, the Lightweight M4 is a laser beam. doesn't have any recoil issues, so like maybe some people would use like the ACR or the G36 because it's easier to handle. If you've got classified striker, you've got so much stability that the lightweight M4 feels like the G36 or the ACR, but it's more accurate. So it's uh, in this with the striker is just it's the better choice, and in general, typically it's the better choice too. So on my lightweight M4, I got predatory, I got destructive, I got determined. Now a lot of people run predatory and destructive, which is great. Those are all really good. Um, destructive is uh, really good on striker because the alternatives added weapon damage stuff like responsive, unforgiving, um, competent, those all are additive with the 100% damage bonus that you got from striker so essentially it cuts the effectiveness of those things in half uh, as opposed to how much benefit they might offer you in a build that doesn't have any added weapon damage in any case. Uh, so destructive is really good because this is more or less multiplicative with the bonuses you got from the striker stacks. I personally, I love running determined because, especially on striker where you've got no skill power, because determined um, has no internal cooldown. You're doing so much damage that even in a group, you're getting a ton, the majority of the killing blows. Uh, it your your skills come back so fast. I've had situations where in certain parts of resistance, you're getting so many enemies coming at you that I've had a popped tack link and I've had the cooldown for tack link come back faster than the debuff keeping you from activating again. I think the debuff is 60 seconds maybe, 30 seconds. I've had the skill come back that fast despite the fact that with this amount of skill power my tack link is, the cooldown is 700 seconds, like 11 minutes. I had it come back in less than a minute. Uh, so competent, very strong with this sort of build where you're doing a ton of damage, where you're getting all the killing blows, you're getting credit for all of that. Um, it's kind of unfair to like if you're playing with like a nomad because they depend on the health on kill a lot as well. So, you know, survival of the fittest, I guess. So that's what I run mainly. I've got the house. I don't use it all that much. I use it if I feel like I'm getting low on ammo for the lightweight M4. Um, but in general, because of all the stability, the lightweight M4 is just so accurate at all ranges that it just feels more powerful in pretty much every aspect. Um, sometimes I run with the pecan as a secondary instead of the house uh, because of the same reasons I run the lightweight. You know, it's accurate. It has a really great headshot multiplier. It's got destructive. Um, it just I don't have competent on it or determined on it, so it's it's not quite as good as my lightweight M4. Um, you know, you could run with like, I don't know, an M60 maybe uh, after you get your stacks from lightweight M4. A lot of people like to run with shotguns in their secondary to get the stacks right off the bat. Um, all good choices. I just personally, I run with lightweight M4. I use it almost exclusively. In the resistance, you kind of have to play around with ammo conservation if you want to avoid buying any ammo before you get to the very end. As far as talents, mm -hmm. I run with the ammo ammo uh, support station, and I run the flashbang. So I run with the ammo support station, so it keeps me basically from having to um, buy any ammo during the run. Um, for the most part, you stay in one spot as you fire, so you can rely on the ammo crate to um, keep your ammo good. So you know some other alternatives. You don't have enough skill power to really have a strong heal you've got so much added weapon damage that booster shots damage bonus isn't really going to do anything for you. 
I mean, look at the, the heal here, 39,000. Basically one second worth of self-healing once you've got full stacks, which is most of the time in the resistance because these are long, drawn-out fights. You build up your stacks at the beginning, you can maintain the stacks throughout the whole thing, the whole wave, right? The reason I run Flashbang Sticky Bomb, not only because the alternatives are tra all trash, essentially, because you got no skill power, but occasionally you get the shield boss on wave 5, and he is extremely annoying unless you stun him so you can get past his shield, essentially. So I use Flashbang, throw it at his feet, blow it up, and just flank him a little and shoot his face a lot. So I, I go back and forth here between Tactical Link and Survivor Link. I have enough survivability that maybe one out of every 20 maps I die before I mean to in the resistance. You know, just culmination of a whole lot of bad things happening at once and I can't save myself. Um, so Tack Link, I really like Tack Link, I really like Survivor Link. I switch back and forth. Right now I'm on a Survivor Link kick, mostly because I like the movement speed bonus. And um, also it, it helps me when I'm in a tough situation. Like if I'm getting flanked, I can pop it and um, get some pretty good survivability. So as far as talents go, the important one here is tech support. Keep my ammo crate out longer. On the move is great just for general survivability. One is none. I don't use so much for the ammo conservation, more because the refunding bullets makes your mag magazine feel larger than it actually is. So there's certain cases where you just needed a couple extra bullets, but you didn't get them because your regular mag. One is none really helps fill that gap. But of course, then you have situations where you went through like 90 bullets and you needed just a couple more for boss, but you know, it is what it is. I like running critical save. Sometimes I run steady hands. The critical save is really nice just because when you get in those uh, tough situations, this can really help, especially if you pop this and then you've already got on the move and then you pop survivor link, you become like unkillable or what feels like unkillable. You basically hit the damage resistance cap, soft cap, whatever. Um, so that's the build. All right, so I've talked about the build maybe a little too long. We'll get to the resistance now. We'll do, um, let's see, usually, I, you know, I go back and forth between Pier 93 or Carrier. Uh, it depends. We'll do, we'll do Carrier this time. So each one of these three maps, um, it has two different resistance crates. These crates have a really good chance to drop classifieds, have a really ch good chance to drop, um, or a decent chance to drop exotics, much higher than, like, from a boss. We've got hostiles all over the place. And um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to try to farm the waves where we have long timers. 20 seconds until next wave. Like wave 4, wave 5, wave 8. These are all like laptop waves, or boss waves where you can just ignore the objective and run out the timer. Next wave of hostiles in 10 seconds. Mowing down anyone and everyone in your path. So what we're going to do to start off with is we're going to hang out in this room for the first four waves. Wave of hostiles now inbound. I'm seeing five hostiles remaining. There's three unfriendlies left. Indicate one hostile left. Come on, let's go. Looks like you've got some EMP bursts inbound. For striker, the hostiles inbound. The EMP seconds. is kind of a nuisance because it keeps you from um, getting more stacks, uh, but can also be kind of nice. Next wave in 10 seconds. Because if you've already got high stacks, it'll basically freeze the stacks no matter if you miss bullets or hit bullets. DMP blast incoming. Looks like you got five hostiles remaining. Can't say you have three enemies left. 
You've got one enemy remaining. Not bad. Twenty seconds until next wave. So I like to prime these doors so that when I have to open it later, it's just a quick little touch. Just keep that. Ten seconds until next wave of hostiles. So we're still at full ammo, which is good. We've stayed inside of our ammo crate this whole time. Next wave of hostiles is beginning. So this one is the 20 seconds until next wave. This is the laptop wave. We're going to stay in here until probably there's like depending on how far away it is cuz it's a really long narrow map. 10 seconds we'll, until uh, next wave. We'll just hang out um either between 30 seconds to a minute. We're going to open up that door. We're going to run for the laptop. Probably pop survivor link for the um, movement speed. Scan the indicated location. to stand over in this corner because they tend to all spawn in the opposite corner and their cover is pretty limited compared to if I stood in the opposite corner. Combat, so I just lost all my stacks. That's not a huge deal. You can see I gain him back pretty fast. All right, it's kind of far away, so we're gonna start gathering and then we're gonna run. So we're just going to stay here. Ten seconds left to complete critical objective.
eliminate all hostiles that remain. I'm seeing one more hostile. Next wave in 20 seconds. Alright. Let's, uh... So we can go either go in bay two, in ten or we can go all the way down to the end. I'll uh, I'll farm number two, bay two. A heavily armored enemy is inbound on your location. back in here and spawn in here. So here's the SHT crate. Hostiles in 20 seconds. That was a pretty weak boss farm, but I think we should still be able to make it. Next wave of hostiles in 10 seconds. I 
So six is a drone wave, so we'll just take him out here. The next wave is about to begin. Human, probably. I'm seeing one more hostile. Let's go get some Prepare stuff. for loss of shade tech capability. Twenty seconds until next wave. Ten seconds until next wave of hostiles. So I like to hang back in here. Warning. Shade Tech interacts have gone offline. seconds until next wave. Where was that? No med? Next wave of hostiles in 10 seconds. Here we go, the tough one. Scan the target area. Not too far away. There 
There is one minute remaining to complete the critical objective. seconds remain for you to complete critical objective. Left. Dan say you got one hostile left. Alright. Get us some ammo real quick. Or some shade tech. That felt like a good one. Felt like a good farm wave there. Good strong one. Get ready. You're gonna have to deal with a contamination anomaly. 20 seconds until next wave. Ten seconds until next wave. Warning, virus bursts are inbound. seconds. Alright, number three, and then we should be able to farm the rest during wave to ten. Hostiles inbound in ten seconds. Have the armored enemy inbound. We got a good boss wave. Sometimes you get the bosses where you get you get only elite enemies the entire time. It's 
So we only need like 2,000. If we farm really hard, I guess we could try to go for even another. We'll go kill the boss. Eliminate remaining hostiles. You've got three hostiles to go. Dan say you got one hostile left. She know what? We got enough, so let her stand out there. And it's number four. Get out of here. Get ready. You're gonna lose shade tech capability. So that's pretty much the farm. Twenty seconds um, until next wave. At this point there's really nothing left to do. I mean if I pick up all this stuff, I'd probably have to go another three waves, four waves to get Ten seconds until next wave to get another hostiles. six thousand. And from here on out, it's all elite enemies, and it's not really that fun. Not as fun as the first ten waves. So, pop Shade survivor lane, just offline. so it doesn't pop and heal me later on, and I just let people kill me. And that is Resistance Farm. So, alternatives here on Carrier, you could do the storage bay at the very end. Um, I find, though, that enemies start spawning inside the storage bay when you're trying to either take cover near it or inside it. And it gets really annoying because they'll flank you and they'll be like 10 meters away. And it's just, it's just not fun. So, um, I hope you uh, at least got something out of this video, and if you've watched this long, congratulations. I mean, we're at, what, like the 38 minute mark or something like that? Props to you, man. Now entering uh, a safe area. So, um, I guess we'll see you next time on the next video. Um, thanks for watching. See you all later. Bye.